computer, activate the threat assessment matrix. Ooh. All right. Toys, <laughs> light of guns. What are we waiting for? We can work with that. Hi, I'm Darius Sadegian, studio director at Rocksteady Studios. In our last episode, we talked about how Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League allows players to customize each character and their playstyle through story-driven mechanics. Man, if you gave me five minutes in there, you'd have the world's authority on microtech and all my inventions. Aw, he's so sweet. <laughs> he's not gonna make it. The Suicide Squad gave us the scope, the narrative, the gameplay, and then the idea of being able to expand that, be able to take this further, it's gonna feel completely fresh. In that spirit, we want to deliver totally new content at no cost for those who purchase Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. We're back in business. All right, let's steal this shit. Today we'll discuss customization options that draw from the full spectrum of DC Comics. You'll see emotes, rival taunts, outfits, and more. We wanted to have a game that was very focused, but this time we really want to expand out with being able to dynamically update, add new content, take on feedback, and evolve the game over time. For the first time ever, we'll give you a preview of what's to come after the credits roll on our main story campaign. We always designed the game in a way that we really wanted it to be accessible for everyone. And for those players that want to delve even deeper into our gameplay and into our systems, it really is about delivering new places to explore, new worlds to be in, new stories, new characters, and creating unique ways for you to play. We're gonna give you the content you like. Speaking of, what are you doing, mate? I'm smiling. Let's dive into Suicide Squad Insider, episode three. Welcome to Task Force X. From the onset, Suicide Squad, being a squad, felt like the right fit for the kind of game that we wanted to make. You get to play with friends, you get to play on your own, but while you are playing on your own, you're playing with the squad, always. Every aspect of our games, we always look at it through the lens of Rocksteady's treatment. And that just doesn't stop at gameplay, that doesn't stop at story. When we're looking at the social features that we've really introduced into Suicide Squad, it has Rocksteady's approach. What do we think players will have fun with? This game has the mechanics to play kind of socially competitively, like none of our games have previously, and it really fits the characters of the squad. With multiplayer, we're leaning into the competition within the squad to show off your skills, show off your medal, be the best one. <laughs> I'm a freaking superstar. The squad are working together under duress. And so it's fun to add in mechanics to encourage the players to behave in the same way. So a lot of the time, what you'll actually be doing is trying to get the highest score, which luckily helps you all complete the mission. But the best player in any mission becomes the squad leader in multiplayer for the next mission. Have right with all. We have leaderboards for solo play, for playing with one friend, two friends, or a four-player squad. You're competing with everyone across the world. Cross-platform, it is the best of the best. Think you're hot shit on toast, but you're cold fight on bread. <laughs> did you see that? Tell me you did. I was like, how do you like that? Hey, son. There's some really fun incentives for playing together as well as playing competitively. You can use the equipment that other players have equipped on their characters in your squad with the AI playing as the characters. And those players whose bots you use get rewards for you using those bots. And that's a really fun feature that I think the players will be incentivized because they'll get something out of doing too. Farewell. We also have the rival taunt system, where on the leaderboards, if you pass your friends or anyone on your friends list who's also playing the game and you beat their score, when well, next time they log in, they'll get this kind of funny quip just to show that, oh yeah, by the way, I beat you. Home run, baby. You boot up the game, you're logging in, and then all of a sudden on your screen, you get Boomerang giving you the finger. I think fans are gonna have a great time with our remote system. Allowing players to kind of communicate in different ways, really in playful ways. As Rocksteady, as creators, this was another opportunity for us to really engage with our characters, extend the narrative through the players' choices with a very cinematic eye. 
Through the game, we offer many customization options and outfits to the player. You start off in the prison, you get your prison garbs, and then you evolve to the Task Force X outfits. Yeah, right. I was thinking something more fashion forward. The outfit customization in our game is uh, vast, to say the least. With this game, Rocksteady will deliver a full story-driven campaign to players, including more cinematics than any previous Arkham game. For players who survived the war against Brainiac's forces and want to keep the adventure going, Rocksteady is ready. We very much knew we had a story to tell initially, and then we wanted to carry on uh, feeding into that, and then changing up the gameplay to have a game that was going to evolve through post-launch content. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is going to be one of the most generous, player-friendly, post-launch experiences available. Every season we will have two episodes. Each season there's going to be a different spin on how you play, and will be heavily themed by a DC villain. So there's many, many layers of influence from the DC world on how you play and what you do. The seasonal content gets automatically dropped into the game each episode. There's no playable content locked behind a battle pass, and the in-game shop is for cosmetics only. You'll always be able to go back and play the episodic content. If you want to come back six months from now, that'll always be there. This is a totally player-friendly approach to letting you play the content you want to play when you want. The DC universe is massive, and in most games, you can only see or explore a tiny, tiny piece of it. But what's really cool about the narrative of Kill the Justice League is there's almost no limit on where we can go. Celebrating before the game is over. <laughs> In his pursuit of trying to recreate his perfect Kolu, Brignac has been experimenting with some of our favorite DC characters' DNA, creating new worlds in alternate realities. It's these worlds that we call Elseworlds. Brignac is a genius of 12th level intelligence, uh, but he's also trying to rebuild this civilization that he misses and is lost, and there is nothing he won't do to get there. New Kolu will be reborn. He's building a model of the multiverse. It's all gathering data. I will unlock your full potential to serve me. There's different versions of everybody in different universes, and their timelines have just diverged at some point. We've got lots of amazing characters coming up in seasonal play that I'm really excited for players to meet. And the Elseworld Principles gives us lots of flexibility and lots of room to put our own spin on them. So we get to play with a bunch of cool shit from alternate universes, and then what? Retire? When Season 1 launches this March, you'll be able to unlock a new playable character for your squad, the Joker. At least buy me dinner first. <laughs> the original Arkhamverse Joker has been dead for five years, but this is a new Elseworlds twist on the villain. He was part of the Suicide Squad in the Elseworld that he's from, which already shows that he's slightly more cooperative than the previous Joker we've had. But as you get used to him and actually play to him, you realize he's unhinged in a different way. Not only has he got to figure himself out, but he's figuring out his place in this new world and this new squad. He hadn't reached supervillain status before Brainiac invaded, so, you know, he's still a bit less experienced. I think we've taken him back to the kind of more vaudeville roots of Joker. He's masking insecurities with traditional Joker behavior. But deep down, he's not sure who he is yet. Lock him up. Oh, making new friends after a move is always tough. As your mission expands deeper into the lore of the DC Universe, this new version of the Joker will join your fight with his unique combat, traversal, and weaponry. His traversal is all based around a rocket-powered umbrella, which he can blast himself into the air, and then uses that to glide around, and then he can actually flip that down to grind the long buildings, knocking enemies out of the way. And the kind of frantic, vertical and horizontal energy that he has means you've always got to be moving and always attacking the enemies. The Joker is only the first of the new squad recruits you could meet through the ongoing additions to our game. Over time, we can build up a library of characters that DC fans might not have expected to see in a video game, like a regular comic book release. I look forward to when the next issue is coming out. And in the same way, I hope people will look forward to the next episode from us. Whatever it is, I'm down.
New environments, new characters, missions, challenges, gear and more. All of this free content comes for players who own the game. We can't wait for you to see what the future holds. With Elseworlds, the possibilities are endless. How do you like that? Thanks for watching this series. We hope you'll join us for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, a third-person action shooter where some of the wildest villains of DC Comics join forces to save the world from its greatest heroes. <laughs> no, no, that's mental. We're not doing that. God help us. <laughs> yeah. I think players are going to be surprised about the depth to which they can craft a character. It comes back to player choice and player freedom. Everything from melee strikes into gunplay, which you could then go into a traversal attack. All of the combat moves flow seamlessly into another. The squad can be garish, they can be loud, and playing together with your friends in a multiplayer space is a really unique experience that you can't get anywhere else. What we've done with the Suicide Squad is to really expand those experiences. Not only just one character this time around, we've done it with four and we plan to do it with more. This brings back memories of my old Suicide Squad. Whether you're in for the main story or exploring what lies beyond, Rocksteady Studios is here to support our players while delivering exciting new experiences. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you at launch February 2nd, 2024.